Good evening, good evening. Welcome to another broadcast of Urban Reno Talk with Tamika and Steve. I am your host. Well, half of your host, Steve. Uh, Tamika will be with us shortly. But thank you for, for tuning in tonight. I uh, hope everyone is doing, doing well in light of what's going on in the country. Um, our prayers are with you, and we hope everyone is staying inside, staying safe, washing hands, and just doing what you need to do to stay safe. I would be lying to you if I would say that I wasn't having anxiety uh, during this time. And that's why you see me on here a lot during these shows, because that's the way I able to get my anxiety out. So we got a great show for you tonight. Tonight, we have a kidney warrior that is not on dialysis, but she is suffering from polycystic kidney disease. And through a, uh, a trial at uh, Vanderbilt, she was able to participate and uh, take a, a drug that pretty much helps suppress the uh, cyst with polycystic kidney disease. So I'm going to let uh, her tell you story all the way from Johnson City, Tennessee, no other than Elizabeth Sterling. Hey, Miss Liz, how you doing? Steve, how are you? Pretty good. How about yourself? I'm doing all right. Hanging in there. <laughs> Great. To get how, how are you holding up? Just trying to get used to the socially distancing and it's a it's a struggle, but you know we can manage. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure. Yeah. Now, you you're not on dialysis right now. No, I'm not. Right. Um, so when you do see your nephrologist now, you do it through telehealth. Actually, no. I do travel to Vanderbilt. I see her once every six months or so. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, my next visit may be telehealth. <laughs> Uh, considering right. that Vanderbilt is a hot spot at the moment for for COVID, but um, I have an amazing team of doctors. The uh, my nephrologist there, she was actually over part of the study trials uh, for Tilbaptin, which is what it was under study trials for, and now it's known as GenRQ. Um, it's been a very very enlightening experience for sure. But, sure. uh, you know, if I have to if I have to travel back to Vanderbilt in May, I'm going to arm myself up and go. <laughs> right. Now, before we get into the trial, let's take us back. You deal with uh, uh, polycystic kidney disease, but it's um, a, what is it? AK PKD? A, a, it's autosomal dominant PKD. Oh, a I'm sorry. Autosomal yes. dominant yes, PKD. Autosomal Can you explain to, to us what that is? Um, basically it is, um, it, the cyst, the, the kidneys, as we all know, are about the size of your fist. And when you have polycystic kidney disease, your kidneys enlarge. And when the, um, the best way to describe it as the kidneys enlarge and, and the cysts get more plentiful, it leaves okay. less room in your body. Now, how big are are your kidneys? Are um, they to the point where they're affecting you? Oh, yes, absolutely. My right kidney is at about 23 centimeters, um, which is an average size of a football. And wow. my left kidney is about 16 centimeters, which is closer to normal size. Um, my nephrologist seemed to think that I have something else that had damaged my left kidney that's not allowing it to grow and produce um like the right one is which is not necessarily a bad thing but my left kidney does not work as well as my right kidney um, okay. my overall function is about 33 to 35 percent and my right kidney is doing 78 percent of that work mm. so now, the left is hardly functioning at all do you experience any pain absolutely um with the growth of the kidneys um, I also have polycystic liver disease. So the kidneys are enlarged. The liver is enlarged. It presses up into your diaphragm, up into your lungs. Um, there's a lot of discomfort. 
Um, I can feel fist rupturing on my kidneys. It feels, to me, it feels almost like a pop. And it causes blood and protein to spill out in the urine, uh, which is not very common with most of the general kidney disease. I don't, I don't believe. Um, mm -hmm. It's dietary is another thing. It doesn't. I don't eat as much as I as a normal person would. I have to eat smaller meals, snacks, stuff of that uh, nature. Um, because we become full so quickly because there's no room for the stomach to expand. And with, um, with my medication, it makes me very thirsty. So sure. I drink an average of a gallon to a gallon and a half of just water a day. That doesn't... Wow you know, my morning coffee or if I decide to have tea in the afternoon or if I want to have a ginger ale or a Gatorade or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. but just at least a gallon to a gallon and a half of water a day. So there's lots of trips to the bathroom, um, lots of trips to the fridge to fill up the cup. Don't go anywhere without it. <laughs> um, if, if you'll look behind me, do you see that, Steve? Uh, yes. Wait a minute. Okay. okay. Up in the top corner, the smaller one, um, this is a piece of artwork that I did. Oh, and, I love it. I love and, it. And it says, your life, and it has a normal size kidney. And then here, you see the larger kidney is a polycystic kidney. I can get in a little bit closer. Wow. So that kind of gives you a comparison as to the size between a normal kidney and um, a polycystic kidney. Now you did that? Yes, I did. Wow. I got, a lot of people in the polycystic uh, kidney disease groups have seen that piece of work. Um, <clears throat> we have living with polycystic kidney disease, polycystic, uh, polycystic kidney disease sisterhood. The Tilbaptin community page is the medication page that I'm on. Uh-huh. Um, but that, yeah, but that just gives you a general overall impression as to the difference. Sure. I want to bring my, uh, partner in. Okay. Uh, right now. Hey, Tamika, how you doing? Tamika. Hi, how are you, Elizabeth? I'm fine. How are you? I'm well. That's good, it. good. Good to see you. You too, Steve. Yeah. So, um, so Miss Elizabeth, um, this all this started happening when you were 17 or you knew before 17 that you had polycystic kidney disease well i grew up i am fourth generation pkd oh wow and my mother my grandfather my mother um and it came from my grandfather's side of the family i'm not i can't remember if it was his mother or his father that had it and um so as far as I know, I'm fourth generation in my family and my son is fifth. And I was about 17 when I started having problems. I knew that there was there was a potential. There's a 50 50 chance that if one parent has polycystic kidney disease, that you're going to inherit the disease. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of got unlucky and right. got dealt. But it is what it is. Um but I started having problems when I was about 17. I was 17 or 18. I was off to college and became very feverish. I um, had extreme pain. There was a lot of blood in my urine. I didn't understand what was going on. My father had to drive to come get me and take me to the doctor. And at that time, we really didn't, you know, really didn't think too much about it. And then I started having more cyst ruptures and such. And I found out on my 21st birthday, I was diagnosed on my 21st birthday with polycystic. Wow. And then three weeks later, I found out I was pregnant. Wow. So my pregnancy was kind of high risk. I got put in bed at seven months because when you're, when you're growing, you know, when you have a baby growing inside of you, that, that baby has to have that room. Mm -hmm. And with polycystic kidneys, I think they were about 
my right kidney was about 19 centimeters at that time. So I've only had a small amount of growth over the last 22 years, which I'm very thankful for. And I'm naturally kind of a small frame person, but with polycystic, you get the protruding belly. Mm -hmm. So the discomfort really started probably within the last 10 years is when I really started to notice a big difference in the way that my body felt. My mm -hmm. energy has always been kind of low. And um, I stay tired a lot, which I think, I mean, that, that comes along with anybody with, with kidney disease, regardless of what the disease is. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, you know, I had a successful pregnancy. It was high risk, but it was successful. Oh, that's and awesome. I have a beautiful son that's going to be 21 this month. And, you know, unfortunately he did, he did inherit the disease and mm. it as it comes. Um, I'm very fortunate not to be on dialysis at this point. My mother had already transplanted when she was my age. Now that's, that leads me to my next question. Are mm -hmm. you, are you on um, preemptive transplant list? No, no. Um, they don't evaluate for transplant till 20%. Mm. And yeah, they don't evaluate for 20%, but I could, you know, be in, you know, I'm at right about 33, 35, somewhere in that area. Even if you had a living donor, even if I had a living donor, now we wow. could, we could take my kidneys out, which we were going to do. We were going to take my right kidney out because it gives me most of my problems. My left one doesn't hardly bother me ever. And then my doctor and I decided to do a nuclear test. And that shows the function of, of each kidney, what each kidney is doing. And had we not done that and just taken my right kidney out, I would have been on dialysis. I would have been evaluating for a transplant. Now, there, the way that my center does it is they will, they will do a nephrectomy first and stick me on dialysis and hope for a transplant. But they won't do that until about 10%. So I still have a lot of time. You know, I could stay in stage 3B for the next 10 years, or I could be in renal failure in six months. It just, it depends on each person. The disease affects each person differently. Correct. And, um, with the with the wait time at Vanderbilt, um, <clears throat> it's a five year wait for a transplant. So if I were to list, if, you know, if I were to list for transplant at twenty percent, I may get a transplant before I ever before I ever see dialysis, depending on how far the disease progresses. Right. Wow. Um, I'm trying to, um, I want to bring in a picture. If you give me a moment, Miss Liz, yeah. um, it's a picture we had. Have you ever heard of someone getting, um, who had polycystic kidney disease, getting both kidneys taken out the same time that they get the transplant? Absolutely. My mother did that. Wow. We we had a gentleman and I'm trying to um if you give me a moment, I'm gonna pull up. We had him on the show uh last month. His name is uh Terrence McLean from New York. And okay. um his sister gave him a kidney, and this is uh what they took out right here. Absolutely, yes. On a kidney. And, yes. and so the one on the left, um, that that larger one almost looks like that picture uh that you showed us. Yes. That's on your wall. Mm hmm So now that seems like that would be a really exhausting um recovery time for this gentleman to take two kidneys out the size of nearly footballs and then implant 
another kidney. Did it take your mom a while to recover when that happened with her? It seems like it was about, she, she passed 13 years ago. She lost her transplant. But it seems, like, um, it seems like within about six months, she was back to a new normal, new normal. There's never, you know, there's never a normal right. <laughs> after transplant. It's a new normal. Yeah, I um, said that a new a new normal because a lot of people think they can go back to their daily activity or the things that they used to do back in the day prior to it, but it's a new normal, right? So wow, you know, uh, not all transplant teams do that. Um, some transplant teams don't even take the infected kidney uh, kidneys out. Um. Some will take one out and transplant at the same time. Some will transplant and then have one kidney removed six months later. And then a year later, they have the other one removed. There's so many different options to do it, um, different ways to do it. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's just it, it's just a matter of your of your transplant team, what they prefer to do. Now, Miss Liz, um, in Johnsonville, Tennessee, is there a high population of kidney disease or dialysis centers that you notice? Um, there's only a handful of people in this area that I know that have polycystic kidney disease. There is a lot of, there, there's a lot of health problems in this area. Um, we have a lot, we have a couple of nuclear plants. We have mm. you know, coal mines a little north of us in Virginia. You know, so in, in, my, in my mother's side of the family is from Virginia. So um, in my whole effect, my whole family on my, on my maternal side has been affected by this. But we wow. see a lot of, we see a lot of diabetes in this area, which also runs very high risk for kidney disease mm -hmm. with the medications and and not controlling diet and blood pressure and all that crazy, all, all that, you know, stuff that you have to you have to keep a watch on. But, um, you know, there's just a handful of polycystic people that I know that's here. Mm -hmm. Are there many dialysis clinics in Johnson City? We only have one that I'm aware of, and it's a DaVita. It's a DaVita um, center. Wow. I've not stepped inside a dialysis clinic in 25 years. I have no desire to until it's my time. Wait, wait a minute, but you have stepped in one before? I went with my mother. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, let me ask you this. When you were seeing your mom go to dialysis, was there ever a time that you thought that your life may end up that same way? Possibly. Because at the time, I didn't know I was, I, I had PKD. I didn't know. Um, I was very naive to it. Uh, didn't want to accept it. Um, I thought that she was just normal and she could go about daily life, just doing regular daily activities and, you know, but that wasn't the situation. You know, you start seeing people in pain and sitting on a dialysis machine and throwing up and, um, you know, not being able to eat. It just um, it opened it opened my eyes quick, especially when um, especially when I you know when I started having major problems of my own. I see that there's somebody there that has a question. Will the yeah, she wanted to know. Will no. the cyst grow back on the transplanted kidney? No. no. So, what not. do you think, Tamika? You look kind of bewildered. Oh no, 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 I'm just, I'm just. No, I know. Listening, I know a lot of patients that have it. You know, I'm just listening and still trying to figure out why are they waiting to transplant her when they can put on a transplant list now. That just always have me stuck. I know. Why you had to wait to I a certain know. number? A certain number. If the person is having failing kit, is sorry, the patient kidneys are failing. Start working them up now. I don't understand it either. Um, 
you know, especially when it takes so long to get a kidney. Exactly. It's, you know, and I'm O positive. My, my blood type is O positive. And so that's going to make it a little bit harder for me to, to, to get a donor. Right. And with, even with that, they should be like, okay, so you're at 33 or whatever. Let's just work hard now. Let's just have her do everything she needs to do. Put her on a transplant list. Mm-hmm. Like just put just put you on. Why have you wait? I don't understand why they do. What what is the reason? Well, I mean, just I mean, general general protocol with Vanderbilt is twenty percent. That's crazy because I know in some places, like in the U in the UK, you have to be ten percent to even touch a diet. Sorry, to touch a diet touch a dialysis machine and you have to be like 5% to even go on a transplant list. Like, I don't understand where these, where these, where these um, protocols come in. Like, have these people ever been on dialysis or had any kidney problems or it's just people out of school just making shit up? Excuse me, just making shit up. Well, maybe to make it, well, no, well, maybe because, um, you know, it may be some people who may be at a lower percentage who may have the greatest need before someone who, you know, reaches that threshold and they're still kind of maintaining and not experiencing, you know, maybe some symptoms at uh, 30% opposed to 10%. Um, but I, I do agree if one has a donor Someone who, who wants to trans, you know, wants to give you a kidney that they should do that, and not wait. But far as you know, maybe a non-living candidate, um, maybe they should have those um, criteria in place, like the greatest need, like someone who is real critical at, you know, like three percent, four percent, they need it over someone you know, at 20% for right. as non-living donor, I, I, you know, I can see that. That's understandable. Yeah. But, I mean, like, come on, just to have her start being worked up, I think that's crazy. Like, she could start yeah. getting a stress test and going to the dentist and doing all those Oh, things. yeah, and have everything in place. So when it do get to that point, then She's you right. already got all everything ready to go in, and then just the donor would just need to do what they need to do. Right. <clears throat> yeah, because I mean, there's so many tests that the donor has to do in addition to the tests that we have to do. Right. As recipients. You know, I mean, I mean, my heart checks out great, um, which is a very, very good thing with polycystic kidney disease because a lot of patients do have heart problems with polycystic. Um, I'll have blood pressure spikes occasionally, take a couple of days to get it under control, but then I'm right back to, you know, to normal. Mm -hmm. Um have a little, you know, a couple of PVCs in my heart from time to time, but you know, overall it checks out, you know, pretty, pretty good. Um, you know, but there, but there's so many, you know, I've had stress tests after stress tests, you know, and my nephrologist has all of the, you know, has all of the access to those records. So, you know, we, we revisited the kidney removal back in December and I'm due to get, I'm due to see her again in May next month. Fingers crossed that I can get there without any problems. Yeah. Uh, if not, I'll do a televisit and we'll discuss it further. She didn't feel like it was necessary at the time to, I mean, I've been begging her for four years. Please take my right kidney out. Please take it out. Please take it out. And, mm. but the point, the point of it all is, is to keep your, to keep your original organs in there as long as you can. Mm -hmm. Let them work as long as they will work. Because if you go removing things and it's still working, you and, your right. backup, and your backup's not working, then you're sitting on a dialysis machine. Right. It's pretty much if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Huh? Right. <laughs> if it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> and duct tape doesn't fix everything. <laughs> right. How did you explain this disease to your son? Um, oh, great question. Was, that's a really good question. I was never, um, I was never silent mm -hmm. about having polycystic. He knew that my mother had it. Um, he was diagnosed at the age of six, unfortunately. But he, mm. 
he's he'll be 21 this month and he's still in stage one good he doesn't have any real you know major medical problems he does have pain um we just kind of you know i just kind of went with it if he had questions if he had questions i answered them and I kind of limited him to some of the things that he did. And it was a battle with sports. He played baseball and he played soccer. Um, But he was limited to what positions he could play because of the kidneys. He wanted to play football. I wouldn't allow it. (laughs) Um, Just because of the physical impact. And, you know, when he played soccer, he played goalie most of the time. So it wasn't like he was, you know, back and forth, you know, in in this, you know, sideline of impact. But he knows he has it, and he's an adult, and he can deal with it however he chooses. But, you know, when he was growing up, we we, we didn't hide it. He knew I I was sick. So um, it just... um, it just kind of all fell into place. It doesn't. I, really, I was just going to say that it just fell into place. Fell into place. It doesn't bother him. Okay. You know, he um, he told me he said, "Well, when it comes to my time and my kidneys fail, I'm not going to go on dialysis. I'm just going to let God do what God's going to do." <laughs> right. Years ago, twenty years ago, we didn't have access to this medication. Gen RQ. Tell us about that. Okay. Um, I started going to Vanderbilt about five years ago. Got in with a nephrologist there. I've been seeing one here locally and my Can you hold that up one more time? Huh? I'm sure. You, okay. You pronounce you, it Gen RQ. Okay. Okay. And that's for people with polycystic kidney disease? For poly uh, for autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease. It so they ha- it has to be that particular uh, dominant. Right. Have- you have autosomal dominant and then you have autosomal recessive. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But Gen RQ only works for autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease. Um, okay. But I started seeing a nephrologist at Vanderbilt about five years ago. And I've been a patient at Vanderbilt for maybe five months or so. And then I get a letter in the mail that one, you know, wanting to see if I would be willing to come in to test to see if I was a candidate for a medication they were calling Tilvaptin, which is what they were calling it in the clinical trials. Mm-hmm. And um, I thought, wow, this is this is kind of, you know, groundbreaking, even though it was in stage three of the clinical trials. Um, so I thought, sure, why not? I'll go down there. I'll test and see what happens. And for the first month, I had to go to Vanderbilt every week. It was a five-hour drive each way every week. (laughs) So that drive gets a little boring after a while. Um, I had to do a washout of some medications. I was on hydrochlorothiazide, and they wanted me clear of that before they before they started me on the Gen RQ. And It um, what what basically what it does is it suppresses the vasopressin in your system, which su- suppressing that suppressing the vasopressin, it doesn't allow the cyst on the kidneys to grow as fast, and it basically acts as a diuretic, pretty much. Mm. Um. When I first started the medication, I was on the 45-15 dose, 45 in the morning and 15 at night. Two weeks later, they bumped me up to the 60-30 dose. Is that milligrams? Yes, 60 milligrams. Okay. You you do one in the morning and one at night. Um, So I did the 60 and the 30 for a couple of weeks, and then I went back to Vanderbilt, and they bumped me up to the Thais dose, which is 90-30. So I take a 90 milligram in the morning and 30 at night. So the earlier you can take the medicine in the disease is probably better. When I first started on Tilvaptin, my GFR was 58. And I've been on the medication for five years. 
So basically four years on the medication buys you one year off of dialysis. Mm. And, you know, I traveled to Vanderbilt so many times. And I couldn't, I couldn't be more blessed with an amazing medical team. I mean, they're, I mean, there is, it's a research hospital. They're top notch. And it's just, I, I couldn't, I couldn't ask for, I really couldn't ask for better. But now let me ask you, I'm sure they explained that there are side effects. Have you experienced any side effects from this medicine? Absolutely. Um, the major side effects that um, that I have received from the medication, I have a head full of hair. I have a ton of hair. But the um, the medication has caused me to have some hair loss, mm. um, which I've kind of got that under control. I actually started using ethnic products on my hair, and um, that has helped strengthen it. And I know a lot of people have have experienced hair loss. Mm-hmm. Um, the thirst is unreal with this medication. It for it makes you so. It's like like I said a few minutes ago. It acts acts as a diuretic basically. So when you take a diuretic, you're naturally going to drink right. because your body is you know getting dehydrated from the diuretic because you're pushing right. it to it. So that's where all the the water comes into play. When I first started this medication, I was drinking almost four gallons a day because my body was so deprived of being hydrated. I was constantly drinking and drinking and drinking and it has to be cold water. I mean, I have to have ice cold water. Oh, wow. Um, And so you're drinking all, you're taking this medication, you're drinking all of this water and then you're up all night. Go into the bathroom. I up, know. Up, down. Jeez. And for the first six months or so, I didn't think I was going to survive on the medication because of all the fluid intake. Wow. I was getting up an average of four or five times a night. Um, very, very, very broken sleep. Exhausted during the day. I can imagine. And, but eventually you learn to adjust to the medication. You learn to, I had to kind of play around with the times that I took the medication. Um, now I take it at 1030 in the morning and 630 in the evening, which doesn't work for everybody, but I'm kind of a night owl and I'm up until 2 a.m. anyway. So I have a little bit of a window there. A lot of people, you know, wake up at four or five in the morning and take their dose. And then they take their second dose eight hours later. So they're taking their last dose at noon or two o'clock in the afternoon where I'm taking mine several hours later. It just depends on, it depends on your lifestyle, what you do. I'm sure. Um, You know, it all revolves around your daily activities. Yeah. I'm sure if, if one worked like, uh, you know, 10 hour, eight hour job, you know, they would definitely have to make sure they regulate that medicine so they wouldn't keep getting up at work. Mm-hmm. Um, going to the restroom. I have to set alarms on my phone to take my medication, um, so I don't forget. But um, I'm very fortunate to work in a family business with my with my family. Um, oh, that's awesome. So you know, I've had a lot of leeway in my life. You know, if I don't feel well, I have the liberty to stay at home and rest and get better. You know, where people have you know regular nine to five jobs and they only have so many sick days. Right. And whatnot that they're not able to take advantage of. So you know, I'm very fortunate to to have you know that part. You know, with with my life. So is the, is this sorry? Is this covered by the insurance? Um, at first, I had a hard time getting um getting coverage from the insurance. After I'd been on the trials for about three years is when they started to transition over to commercial. And there is a patient assistance program that I was able to enter. It's called Otsuka. Mm -hmm. Um, 
O-T-S-U-K-A. It's the Otsuka Patient Assistance Program. And they, um, they were able to dispense the medication to me at no cost. Yeah, because the medication is like $15,000. It's $14,000 for a 28-day supply. Wow. And it's, it's almost six, so it's almost 16000 for a 56-day supply. That is... This, it comes in a box. A month supply comes in a box that looks like this. And inside this box, there's four sleeves. And each, gotcha. sleeve, each sleeve is a week of medication. Wow. So without wow. insurance, I mean, my insurance covers all of it except for $10 a month now. Wow. But with insurance, it's about fourteen thousand dollars. Mm. Wow! Now we have, you know, Lisa Baxter. She does the Lisa Baxter show. Uh, her family suffered with um, polycystic kidney disease. Um, Lisa, did you have you heard of this um, medication um, when you were on dialysis? Because it affected most of her siblings. Um, wow. Now, Miss uh, Elizabeth, um, was there ever a time where you thought your son may see you on dialysis like you saw your mom going to dialysis? Absolutely. Did that ever come across your mind? Absolutely. And he may still see that. Um, you know, because, I mean, like I said earlier, you know, the, the disease progresses differently in each patient. So, you know, I'm, I'm at 33, 35 today, but six months later, I could be in renal failure. Right. Um, so you just, it, you, you never know. A lot, a lot of people tend to look at their family patterns. Um, Cause when, I mean, when my mom was before, you know, pre-dialysis, this medication wasn't available. It wasn't approved by the FDA until two years ago. So it's only been on the commercial market for two years. Um, okay. okay, that's why, Lisa. It's in the United States. Now, it has been approved in Europe for longer than that. I'm not sure of the exact time frame. Um, but, okay. you know, there, there's still, you know, there still is a chance that I could you know, my child could see me on dialysis. And if that were to happen, I hope that he would open his eyes and see, you know, hey, maybe mom's right for once. <laughs> maybe um, I should take this medication. Miss Elizabeth, just one quick just question. We have a gentleman on, um, Randy Dale Brown, who okay. uh, is... Um, the brother of Jared A. Brown, uh, host of the Warriors Quest, and he has PKD. Okay. Um, what what words of wisdom could you share with him? I'm not sure which, if his is recessive or dominant, but just what you went through from 17 up until this point, dealing with CKD, I mean PKD, and with this trial and the medication. What insight? could you give uh, Randy? Um, eat right. Drink water. Exercise, you know, if you can, whatever your body will allow you to do. Um, try to get good quality of sleep. It's, it's hard. You, it, it's definitely a journey. And it's one of those journeys that you don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. So you have to take it one day at a time. And have hope because 20 years ago, I would have thought I'd been sitting on dialysis right now. But there are people out there that are doing research, not only not only the research on the Gen RQ that I was very fortunate to be on, but there's a lot of other trials out there that are testing patients with polycystic kidney disease to slow down the progression. So, you know, just hang in there. Take it one day at a time. Listen to your body. Listen to your body. If your body is saying something different that's new to you, get it checked out. It'll be worth it in the long run. 
And when you say eat right, what exactly like should he be eating? Well, that's not really up for me to determine. Okay. Uh, your lab work, your lab work will tell that. Like I'm on a potassium restriction. I'm only allotted so much potassium a day and I'm on a protein restriction. Sure. So I'm only allotted like 70 grams of protein a day. Um, a thousand milligrams of sodium. Mm-hmm. Uh, we all have cheat days. We're not all going to eat right every day. Mm-hmm. It's just right. not possible. We're human. Um, so, you know, he needs to get his lab, his lab checked out, meet with a dietitian. Absolutely. And see, you know, see what your, what your ramifications are, what you are allotted to do. Because everybody's uh, different, right? Everybody's different. I try to eat a primarily primarily a vegetarian diet. Uh, not vegan, but vegetarian. You know, occasionally sure. I will have some chicken or fish, um, ground turkey, even, you even eat, you crazy try to steak. stay away from animal protein, right? Absolutely. Yeah, as, as much as possible, um, especially red meat, because it's really hard for the kidneys to break down and process. Yes. But who doesn't crave a cheeseburger? <laughs> you know, like I, I ain't gonna even talk about that. Yeah, yeah. So we're all—I mean, we're all human. But right. it's—it's you know, it's really hard for the kidneys to break down animal protein. And when you have polycystic and your kidneys are larger and they are compromised more with all this surface—you know—surface junk, as I like to call it. You're right. It's harder to break down. Tamika didn't get to see my um, my painting earlier. Oh, can you show it again? It says the F word. I don't want to say it, but it does. Yeah. <laughs> but it, the top That's corner, awesome. It gives a um, it gives a depiction of a normal sized kidney, and then you have a polycystic kidney. Yeah, I've seen them in my patients when they come in. Some of the patients have really big stomachs, and I'm like, "Well, what's wrong?" And that's when I first start learning about PKD. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, and it's it's a struggle, mm-hmm. really. You know, it's an emotional struggle too. A lot it's of my it's an emotional struggle. It's a mental struggle. Yeah. Thank God, I have an amazing therapist. Yeah. I have been. A, I have a great team of amazing nephrologists. Um, I have a great primary care doctor here in my hometown that advocates for me. You know. Uh, I'm so excuse me. I mean, I'm so glad that you said that you have a primary care doctor because so many patients don't think that they need a primary care doctor, and they do. They need a team. Yeah, my primary care doctor is actually an internal medicine. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, I can't go to any Joe Schmo, you know, for whatever. Right. I have somebody that that knows what's going on. Right. She likes to eat. We have a medical school here, and she likes to stick her residence on me. Oh, okay. Yes. Mm. That's good that you have that team, the yeah. primary and the, the nephrologist, and they're all working together. That is the oh, primary yeah. piece, something that needs to be taken care of as far as with, 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 um, with your meds, because sometimes the, the meds don't go together. No. She uh she does uh most of my blood pressure medicine control and my pain control. Um and if something needs to be tweaked, she contacts my nephrologist, they talk about it. Good. And we do what we have to do. I remember years ago, like twenty years ago, when the pro- when a primary care and the nephrologist actually had really good relationships. I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. I don't either. The growth of, I, I think, more patients. Yes, more patients. <laughs> I just got very fortunate. Yes, you did. Yes, you got now, Miss Liz, when um, you had mentioned that back in your 20s, you, you weren't taking this serious. At what at what point in, in your life did you start taking this situation serious with uh, polycystic kidney disease? Um. Probably about my mid late twenties. I mean, I lived my twenties. <laughs> I really did live my twenties. 
Um, you know, life is short. Life is short. So it is. You know, got some living to do. Do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Even with this coronavirus, do it. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm so tired of being in the house and, and our governor just today put a stay at home order on us. So we're in the house now, but, um, but, you know, really, um, I kind of ate what I wanted to eat, drank what I wanted to drink, did what I wanted to do, but I knew what my body could and couldn't handle. Like today you would never find me on a roller coaster or, or a four wheeler or any kind of off-roading adventure. Because those things jar the kidneys and cause cyst ruptures. And when you have a cyst rupture, it causes, sometimes it causes infection mm-hmm. and you wind up in the bed. I, I wound up, I wound up in the hospital one time after a 16 day bleed. I bled for 16 days. My, um, wow. my husband was down to like a four, I think. Mm-hmm. And wow. they were ready to transfuse me, but we were able to get it back up with iron pills. So, you know, the less jarring I can have on my body, the less chances I have of having a cyst rupture. So, and as, as my kidneys have progressed and they've grown larger, I've kind of tamed myself down quite a bit mm-hmm. as, far as, as far as my activity. So does, does something cause them to rupture or they just rupture on their own? They just rupture. They just, sometimes they just rupture. I can feel them pop. Mm. It's like, a, like if you were to take a piece of bubble gum and blow a bubble and somebody were to flip it and you hear it pop, I can actually feel that inside my body. Oh my God. Not everybody experiences it. You know, I can feel a pop and then I, I feel a stabbing pain. Wow. And all of a sudden, it's complete discomfort. I'm tired. I'm exhausted. I'm nauseated. Each patient handles it differently. You know, so, you know, and some people, you know, sometimes I'll rupture a cyst and not see any blood. Um, I've only had four physical ruptures where I could see blood. Only four in 25 years. Wow. But okay. I mean, but they still rupture. They right. Still rupture. You can still feel them. You still have blood in your urine. You just don't mm-hmm. see it. Right. Mm-hmm. Not unless I you probably did a dipstick or something like that. Well, I can smell it. You start to smell it. Um, a couple of days ago, I felt abnormal. Took myself to my primary care doctor. Sure enough, I had a UTI. I could smell it. I can I could feel it. Um and if I have a rupture and it comes it comes out in my urine, I can smell it. Wow. Wow. It, yeah. You know, I had I had somebody tell me that they were friends with somebody who was a who was a, a kidney nurse, was a RN in a kidney clinic. And said that she could always smell a kidney patient. Yes, you can. A lot of times you can. Well, that's if it's under dialyzed because Mm -hmm. of the uremia. Yep. You know, you know, you just, I, I smell it. I can't really, you know, and and I feel if my body is not on track. Mm. But I'm glad that you listen to your body. You know, I'm glad that you listen to your body. Well, how about Jared says you could smell it. Wow. <laughs> yeah, but um, you know, it's just it is a lot of water. Be kind to yourself, be kind to your body, be kind to your mental state, your emotional state. Um you know, I know a lot of us are having problems right now. I I I am. Um you know, so you know, you gotta try to do things to keep yourself in check, just like you know, just like with anything else, you just got to listen to your body. And if oh, absolutely, a lot of people don't know how to listen to their bodies. I think they listen, but they it, they ignore it or they try to yeah. or they yeah. do grandma's 
what I call grandma's recipe for disaster. Like <laughs> they do something melty. like something that grandma told them to do. Oh, you got a sty on your eye. Oh, put a tea bag on it. No, it's something going on. Like go to the doctors, you know. <laughs> I'm, I'm for doing some kind of a some home remedies. Like if I have pink eye or something or allergies, I you know wash my eyes out with honey water. Right. You know? See, and <laughs> grandma's recipe. <laughs> <laughs> right. Or you, or wow. You, again, a style. Oh, you got a baby in the house. Put the pamper on your face. I'm not putting baby pee on my eye. So. <laughs> <laughs> so no. Love it. I ain't never heard that one before. Yes, they say put the put the pamper and the urine on your face, and it's supposed to take it. I'm not doing that. I'm sorry. I'm not putting nobody's urine on my eye or on my face. No, I'm good. I'll just go to the doctors. <laughs> yeah. Now, Miss Liz, um, ha- have you started doing any advocacy, um? For, for PKD or any education or decided not to do that? Really, not really. Um, we had a National Kidney Foundation walk here back in September, and I did do the mission statement for the chapter here. But um, I've not really done a lot of work. I, I, I probably could. I could do a lot more than I'm doing. Um, I'm actually an auctioneer. Oh. And um, I could be doing a lot of a lot of auctions, a lot of fundraising auctions, auctions, which I have mentioned to the chapter here, but now is not the time to really be doing those. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, I think, as you know, I'm not as educated as some, I'm, I'm not as educated as a lot of people on PKB, but I've just kind of lived it. Right. It's okay. Like the fact that you lift it, you're giving your experience. And then in time, you'll start gaining more knowledge because you lived it. And once you start talking about it more, you'll start at so you start educating yourself more on it. So don't think the current state that you're at, you can't advocate. Absolutely. Actually, you're the best advocate. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, the the best advocate you have is the advocacy you have for yourself. Yeah. And sometimes people need somebody else to stand up and say, hey, you know, what's going on here? Um, you know, I'm willing to talk to people about my experience in life with this disease. I'm willing to, you know, lend an ear to somebody if they need to talk, if they're newly diagnosed or have questions or, you know, if they're experiencing, you know, different symptoms. You know, um, my ears are open. My inbox is open. I mean, you hear it. I mean, Mrs. Liz saying that if, if anyone have any questions whose family members may be dealing with this or even themselves, um, you have a person who's actually living through uh, this situation as we speak. You are not alone. Mm. Um, you are not alone. If you do have polycystic kidney disease and you're watching this broadcast, I encourage you to join Living with Polycystic Kidney Disease group. It is an amazing worldwide group of patients in all stages of polycystic kidney. There's also um, there's also um, polycystic uh, kidney disease sisterhood page, which is really good. If you are interested in learning more about GenRQ Tilbapton, there is a group called Tilbapton Community. It's a great group. Uh, it's based out of the UK. A lot of good experience there. Um, is is this common? Uh, Adam Jacobs asks Elizabeth, "Have you been checked for cerebral aneurysms? Is that something common?" It is very common with polycystic patients. I was tested about four or five years ago, and I'm due for another scan uh, next month. And but so far, I'm clear. But it is very, very common to have aneurysms in the brain. Wow. Yes. I didn't even know that. Yeah, it's recommended scan every five years. Okay, every five years. Wow. Wow, but I can see that. 
Yeah. You know, if you're having if you're having severe headaches um, to the point where they're migraines, get checked. Get checked because I had an uncle who had an aneurysm erupt on him while he was driving. Luckily, luckily he made it through. Wow. Very, very thankful he made it through. But, but yes, they are very common and they do run high on in, in, in my family. Wow. They're, they're, they're Kelly, Kelly Jenkins mentioned that she had a, a brain aneurysm. And she's still here to uh, talk about it. God bless you, uh, Kelly. Thank you for sharing that. That that might be a good that might be a good topic for you guys to do. You know, um, PKD patients with aneurysms. Okay. Uh, if they if they catch them early, they can go in and clip them. Where they go in and clip them off, where they don't they don't erupt. Um, that that might be a topic that you guys might want to. Explore, yeah. Would, would yeah. you be would you be willing to come back and and add into the discussion? Um, I mean, I could come in and add into the discussion, but I don't really know a whole lot about them because it's not anything that I've had to battle. Um, mm -hmm. you know, there's there's a lot of patients that have had to battle brain aneurysms. Yeah, maybe we should reach out to Kelly Jenkins. Yes, absolutely, I would. I would for sure. Okay. Yeah. Because I can't, I can't tell you my experience on that because I've not, I've not been there. I've not seen that. that that's not been a part of my journey, so I can't really sure. speak on that. I don't know, no, know a whole yeah. lot about. No, that's understandable. That's understandable. But uh, yeah, she said absolutely. You can DM direct message either myself or Tamika Gaines or Jared or Lisa Baxter uh, for your availability. But I'll reach out to you absolutely. Okay. So we're we're coming down to to the end of the show, but Miss Liz, what do you want people watching this show to know about PKD and and your experience? My experience is not the same as yours is going to be. Listen to your doctors. Listen to your body. Um. Do, do some research, read up, and just, you know, li live one day at a time, like with anything else, one day at a time, because you never know what tomorrow's going to bring. Look where we're sitting now. I never thought that I would have seen, you know, I would have seen in my life what's going on in this world right now. Mm -hmm. And I never would have thought that I would have had access to this medication. Wow. So, you never, you, you just, you never know what research is being done out there. You never know what you're going to have the access to in five years. Mm -hmm. they, they could have a cure. So a complete cure. So just hang in there, take things, day, you know, one day at a time. Try not to stress over it. It's hard not to stress over it. But just hang in, hang in, hang on and take care of yourself. Now, one more thing about that medicine. You said they do have coupons to cover that high cost. It's a it's a patient assistance program called Otsuka, O T S U K A, and I do have the phone number for the Otsuka Patient Assistance uh, Foundation. Um, but you have to you have to go through your doctor first. That your doctor has to be trained to just uh, dispense this medication. Oh, okay. Okay. So, so you do have to be tested. It, liver function is a big deal. They want to check your liver labs because the medication is filtered through the liver. Right. So, mm. but your doctor has to be trained on the medication. And um, it's a battle with insurance, but Otsuka is available to give, to give, um, medication to dispense medication out there to low income people, uh, people who don't have insurance. If you want their phone number, I'll be happy to give it to you. Um, sure. Um, let me, uh, all right, I'm ready. And what's the name of the, um, organization? It's called Otsuka. O T S U T O T S U K A. Okay. 
assistance program. And their phone number is 855. Wait a minute. Okay, hold on. Um, 855-727-727. Okay. 6274. All right. And this if someone wants to try this medicine and they you know they do uh get a you know the doctor say okay then this is the assistant program that helps them with this medicine. If the if the insurance if the insurance denies coverage of the medication, um you you can you can contact um Otsuka. Wow. How much do they cover? Everything but $10. Every, for me right now, everything is but $10. For, wow. the first year, for the first year, I was on the commercial meds. Well, the first year and a half, I was on the commercial meds. I didn't have to pay anything. Wow. Uh, and then starting at, you know, the first of, you know, the first of this year, my copay was $10 for a $14,000 medication. Jesus. Wow. I'm, yeah. I was reading it, going to show, and yeah. It's for ten. It's ten. Um, ten bucks. Wow. Yeah, they're, actually, they're actually the make um the makers of the of the med. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Okay. Wow. I wish some people who could get insulin like that. I mean, geez. <laughs> I know it's sad. Wow. All right. Well, Miss Liz. Um. I mean, amazing story, Tamika. You have anything? No, I'm, I'm learning. I'm, I'm yeah, learning. absolutely. With each show, we, we learn, learn. And we definitely appreciate you coming on and yeah. sharing your story. I'm, yeah, good. I mean, I, you know, I, I'm, I've met you just seeing your post. Uh, I'm trying to think back of the uh, actual uh, post that you responded to. Maybe it was like a couple of weeks ago. It was um, like was in Jim Myers um, kidney and coronavirus group. Oh, okay. That's how, that's how I found it was through Jim Meyer. Oh, that's awesome. Uncle yeah. Jim. Yeah, that's that's, that's, that's yeah. great. <laughs> um and um but but I thank you for taking the time out and, and sharing your story. Um it, it's kind of hard getting people to, to share their story because we hope to um just give other people hope that let people know that you're not alone. Um, it, you know, dealing with, with this disease. And so again, we, we, we definitely thank you and um, look forward. I mean, we have another show that comes on Wednesday called warriors quest. And if you'd like to come on that show with Jared, a Brown to uh, share your story again, or even just add some insight, uh, that would be great. Absolutely. Any any time, I'll be happy to I'll be happy to speak. Oh, thank you. You're thank welcome. you so much. All You're right. Welcome. Well, stay safe, Miss Elizabeth, and we'll see you on Facebook. Okay. Absolutely. Take care, guys. All right. Take care. God All bless right. and uh, be safe. Bless you too. Y'all be safe. All Meanwhile. right. Thanks. So what do you think, Tamika? This was, that was an yeah, awesome she's show. And she's gonna have me. Um, do a little bit more research on P on PK group. I know we, we I know it's just so many dynamics mm -hmm. to this disease that we have. I mean, we've been doing this what two years, three years, and I don't think we have even touched the iceberg of on a lot of diseases. No. no. Yes. Yes. I want to talk about uh Alport. Uh, disease. Yeah. Um. Oh, that's awesome. Hey, please, uh, Dad TV, reach back out to me. I sent you an email. Thank you for watching the show. Uh, God bless you. Uh, Dad Vice TV uh, runs a a great YouTube uh, channel, Tamika, with over forty thousand uh, or more viewers. Um. Uh, great give great advice as well um but yeah this this was a great show and um i hope we could get more people a uh, variety of of guests on here like dad vice tv uh he he 
uh, dealt with kidney disease and reversed his uh, disease. A, a change of eating habits? Huh? A change of eating habits? Uh, uh, many stuff. Uh, he just put a note. I will. Uh, just getting all caught up with. Absolutely. Thank you, man. We looking forward to, to talking with you and, and hearing your story to uh, inspire other people dealing with this disease worldwide. Um, thank you, Dad. I appreciate it. Oh, he says GFR 8 to, to 33. Awesome. Wow. <laughs> That's damn good. Wow. We wow. got to hear this story. Yes. I mean, if you, we, we got to get this story. 8 to 33. Mm. Diet and lifestyle changes. Wow. And he, he says diet and lifestyle changes did it. See, Tamika, this is what we need. To have other warriors. Exactly. Inspiration and hope. And knowing, like, if they're at, um, you know, stage one, two, or three, and even get down to eight, mm -hmm. could possibly reverse that and go back up as uh dad vice tv did from eight to 33 and you know oh right, but he was he was mm -hmm. he was determined steve you know like some people they're not determined so they'll only do just a little bit like he was consistent with what he was doing absolutely and you know what congratulations to tanya hobson uh I thought they would say she had a baby. Yeah. And yeah. she, you know, she's at 17%. Um, wow. EFR, or I'm not sure where it's at, but you, she came off for dialysis five, wow. six years ago. Wow. And, I thought that was her. I'm like, hold up, wait. And, and look, wow. dad, he, he takes like, reading the deal. Wow. Yep. <laughs> this is the product that dad, dad Vice takes. I mean, and we talked about this. Wow. We ought to do a show with Dad TV and revisit Rena Deal and talk about this. Yes, Jared. Yes. We, we're going to revisit this show and talk about Rena Deal. Um, and speaking of Rena Deal, before we close, Tamika, um, if you see at the bottom, guys, if you want this try this if you go to www.renadeal.com and put in uka 2020 you can get three bottles of rena deal and one bottle of fortis which is a um a fight multi-fiber uh probiotic for 162 you, but you have to put in the code uka 2020 yeah. and they also have the three bottles you put in Urban Kidney 2020. When you go to their site and register, you can get three bottles of Rena Deal for 141, which is uh, my parents' house number 411. <laughs> but but yeah, and, and that's great. And here go the site. We got it scrolling at the bottom. You can't go wrong with this product. It's a dietary supplement. So remember, it hasn't been um evaluated by the fda so it doesn't is not intended to treat cure or um or prevent any diseases it helps uh maintain healthy kidney function mm -hmm. but great product dad tv uses it yeah. gfr from <laughs> 8 to 33 is amazing Mm -hmm. Unbelievable, and 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 we'll have them on my our show soon to share that amazing story. Yes, that's awesome. That was good news. Oh, he says fiber turbo charges the arena deal. Wow. It is the food to help it reproduce <laughs> faster. Wow, some great <laughs> dad TV. God bless you. Thank you for stopping by and even sharing these tips. Mm -hmm. I mean just taking the time out of your busy schedule because I mean, I know you're over on YouTube burning it up, but thank you so much for these tips. And 
if you're watching this and you're not taking these tips, I mean, wow. So, Tamika, this has been an awesome show beyond my expectations. Yes. Um, so for being late, Steve, I had to take a mental walk. I had to take a mental walk with all this coronavirus, then reading the, the thing that was on the chat. You know, I just had to just go take a walk outside and just get my bearings back because it's just too much. Me, oh, me too. I'm about to break open my Bible. Yeah, I, I'm it's serious. Too much. I just had to get my mind right mentally. You know, like you gotta be kidding. You know, so everyone, you know, sometimes you have to take a mental walk, especially in these times today. Just go take that walk. Like, just get some air. <laughs> yeah oh absolutely and I, I would advise going to dad vice tv on youtube and check out his um video on the coronavirus and, and kidney warriors um he, he just got some great stuff on there i mean he lives he lives it right this is his life yeah yeah absolutely yeah you you, you put that code in uh urban kidney 2020 you get the three bottles of renadil uh for 141 when you go to uh, www.renadil.com and register on that site so yeah um i'm going to be taking uh yeah it is i mean we just getting some great information tonight tamika i mean i mean Thank you, Dad Vice TV. God bless you for even stopping in and sharing your insights and um, information. So, yeah, Tamika, I, I I've I had to take those walks as well. For me, a drive. Yeah. Um, you know, so, and I just had to take it one, just like, um, uh, Miss Liz say, uh, you got to take it one day at a time. And almost literally uh, an hour at a time for me. Yeah. Like, you got to live in the moment, you know. And sometimes living in the moment is hard when you feel that you had a promising future. Right. You, you are working on things or trying to get your house in or, you know, trying to get back a relationship with your children. And then just to truly have to live in the moment. Because no one knows what's coming or where this disease is going to hit next. Is it going to come on your front door or what? Like just to go to the store for, for gross. I'm just sorry, just to go to the store for groceries. Like you just don't know where you're going to get it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we just got to do what we do at the unit. I mean, you can't oh, find I any. Can. I can't find any. You know, wipes or anything like that. So I make a bleach solution and. You have it at the Never I don't got it yet, but I'm saying if it gets to that point, have it at the door, spray my shoes, wipe it down, and leave them right there. But you see, know, I think that you should have it on you, especially when you go into the stores. Like, you really don't know how those carts are being handled, right? You know, I was watching things, even as far as picking up your gro picking up your groceries. Like, now I, I don't feel comfortable picking up my groceries. Because someone could have sneezed on it, bam, wow. and I come right behind them and touch them. Not thinking I have to protect myself from the damn darn groceries. Like, dang. But how would you know that they have the, the virus? You don't know. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's got everybody on edge. And right. I don't even want to talk about it because I have some you other know, theories. I had to go and, and I had to walk because I'm like, this is. Right. I have a one year old. I just got my life back. Like I just got that second chance that people don't usually get. But but this is this is my thing to make it. How all of a sudden, I mean, how all of a sudden, one minute everybody's out, we're in the grocery store, we we like nothing, and no, I mean, no one's getting sick around. You know, my way, I mean, when all this is like really hit, now all of a sudden, it just seemed like overnight, you, you're afraid to stand right next to somebody 
especially if that person never been to China or out the neighborhood, right. you're still like, how would he have gotten it? Right. That's, like, that's what I'm and, saying. And I'm thinking like, well, in some places, how how did he even get there? You know, just what's what like what's really going on? I'm sorry. Like, yeah, no, I know, I know. Really I'm just saying. Like, but that's just really why I don't even try to entertain it because it's just too much for mind blowing. Yeah. So, so anyway, man, this was a great show. Um, I really enjoyed it. I'd like to thank everyone who tuned in. We did have up to about 30 something people. That was awesome. Um, thank everybody's getting tired. We down to nine. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, but, uh, Everyone, thanks a lot for for joining us, and um, we look forward, us. huh? And constantly supporting us. Yes, yes, absolutely, and we look forward to being back next week with a another great show. Yes, 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 and tune in tomorrow for Kidney Stories at eight. Kidney Stories two with Uncle Jim. He's going to have uh, Melissa Tuff uh, on there. Uh, she was a pediatric uh, patient. Uh, she's uh, affiliated with the AAKP, I believe, as an ambassador. Uh, Jim's known her uh, such a long time, and she has a great perspective uh, on this disease, um, wow. especially wow. from being a pediatric patient. Yes. I love to hear it. Yes, all yes, right. yes. Everyone, stay safe, wash your hands, and God bless you all. Absolutely. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you, Miss Liz. God bless you and everyone else who tune in to watch the show we see you next week all right to make i talk to you soon baby girl good night all right take stay safe you too steve all right baby all right